ladies and gentlemen welcome you to est 102 c programming so this is the first uh, session on that the first speech is organized into your learning outcomes then the overview of c programming and uh, the course outcomes then the total national level program outcomes then how do we instruct a computer then uh, the summary of understanding so in this video you will appreciate uh, an overview of computing then you will understand the course outcomes uh, given by the university and the total national level program outcomes and we will see how this syllabus achieves the course outcomes and the total national level program outcomes then we will see the sphere of opportunities in computing this course is primarily uh, we are i'm delivering this uh, course for the electronic students so you have, we have to specifically say what are the sphere of opportunities in computing for electronic students then you will appreciate different programming languages and uh, you will understand the purpose of learning c why should an electronics engineer learn c programming See, computing, communication, and internet, they play a key role in modern life. And uh, computing uh, skills are essential for all engineers who work in design and development, be it a mechanical engineer or production engineer or uh, electronics engineer or electrical engineer. They may need uh, some computing skills uh, somewhere because everywhere uh, AI-based automation is uh, seeping in. So some kind of computing skills are essential for all engineers. And computer programming is an essential uh, skill for an electronics engineer, especially when you work with embedded systems, etc. You have to communicate at a lower level with the hardware. Uh, so the, uh, you, you need uh, many computing skills. These computing skills equip uh, the student uh, with uh, better resources for design, easy problem solving, and uh, efficient implementation of systems. And your sphere of opportunities, they get bigger uh, with uh, uh, computing skills. And as per KTU, these are the course outcomes here. The first course outcome is to, uh, after the completion of the course, the student will be able to first, uh, the, uh, the student will be able to analyze a computational problem and develop an algorithm bar flowchart to find a solution. So the student will be able to look at a problem, then split these problems into small problems and then develop an algorithm or flowchart to find the solution. Then the CO2 is to develop uh, readable C programs with branching and looping statement which use arithmetic, logical, relational or bitwise operations. Like looping, or branching, etc. Uh, how to accomplish that. Then the CO3 that is right, uh, C double, uh, readable C programs with array structure or union for storing uh, 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 the data to be processed. Uh, that you, you have to work with arrays, etc. Dif then uh, CO4 divide a computational problem into a number of modules and develop a readable uh, multi-function C program by using recursion if required to find the solution of the computational problem. Then CO5 writes readable C programs which use pointers for array processing and parameter passing. CO6 is to develop uh, readable C programs with uh, uh, files for reading input and storing output, that is file operations. Then the government of India has uh, put forward uh, 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 12 national level program outcomes. So this every engineering student in India should uh, uh, familiarize. First is uh, engineering knowledge, that is to apply the knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals and an engineering specialization to the solution of complex engineering problems. The engineering knowledge. The second thing is a problem analysis, I, that is to identify, formulate, review, research literature and analyze complex engineering problems reaching substantiated uh, conclusions using first principles of mathematics, natural science and engineering science, how to analyze problems. The third is a design development and solution, this is very important, so as uh, uh, engineers you have to design many systems, develop many solutions, etc. Then conduct investigations of complex problems. So uh, suppose you are given a research problem or a complex engineering problem. 
uh, how, how do you uh, uh, research uh, based research on that problem and uh, uh, how, how do you document the material how do you read the materials uh, and develop a methodology of your own to solve that problem then modern tool usage is the fifth one this is very important so uh, during this course uh, how many modern tools uh, you will come across so many open uh, tools are available uh, many modern industrial tools are available which is to and to familiarize the engineer and society so uh, an engineer is basically solving the problems of the society or um, making uh, the society more uh, uh, comfortable with uh, new resources and uh, new systems then environment and sustainability this is very important uh, this is to understand the impact of uh, the professional engineering solutions in societal and engineer environmental co context and demonstrate the knowledge of and need for sustainable development and ethics is very important uh, so whatever you do you, you should uh, follow the ethical values so apply ethical principles and commit to professional ethics and uh, uh, responsibilities and norms of the engineering practice then individual and teamwork so we, 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 as engineers you have to work in a team function effectively as an individual as a, or as a, and as a member or leader in diverse teams and in multidisciplinary settings this is very important how to lead a team how to work in a team that you have to be familiar with then communication communication is very important especially you work in a large organization you have to communicate effectively on complex engineering activities then the project management and finance uh, uh, because ultimately uh, engineering runs with uh, based on economics that is a, a huge amount of money is invested in projects so you have to have a good uh, understanding of the management of projects and uh, the way the money is utilized then lifelong learning uh, so certain things in certain courses and uh, papers you learn some concepts that are useful for uh, or through uh, useful throughout the professional life so how much of the things you get from this so naturally say programming if you go into any area of hardware or software uh, you will have a use of that and this diagram you have to understand uh, carefully this diagram depicts the sphere of opportunities when i say sphere of opportunities i am talking about the sphere of opportunities with the programming languages and computing tools uh, i i have drawn this uh, picture uh, specifically for electronic students so uh, here whatever uh, i put in blue boxes you have to pay very at uh, great attention to that <coughs> that will be quite useful to you in your uh, uh, four year course so uh, uh, here I, I put this uh, lang programming languages and computational tools into general computing languages then the hardware description languages is a totally different uh, thing then the languages for scientific computing languages for the web this uh, mostly computer science students are worried about how to make web pages all that but some electronics engineers also uh, work with the web so that's why I put it there uh, then the languages for documentation this is useful for everyone every engineer because uh, in every organization you have to make a lot of reports you have to make a lot of proposals you have to make a lot of presentations etc so so there are many languages for documentation so under this general computing languages you have languages like c c plus plus etc so as an electronic student you have to have a thorough understanding of c programming because why do you learn c programming because uh, you, you, in your life you have to write a lot of hardware drivers a embedded you have to work with a lot of embedded systems everywhere uh, uh, you have to use c because c is the uh, lowest level high level language uh, rather uh, i must say because uh, it, it works at the hardware level so if you want to uh, communicate with systems at the very primitive level at the very lower level uh, you have to have a good understanding of c language so here uh, for electronics engineers uh, you, you will have to work with a lot of embedded system software embedded system software iot etc so a knowledge of c will uh, uh, be very useful if you go to the embedded industry so th that is one side here and here this is a very promising side this uh, uh, s this path is a very promising one and it's a highly paid uh, uh, jobs are there uh, 
uh, this is uh, not a software but a hardware like hardware description languages are there like very log VHDL etc you will uh, uh, come across this in your uh, third semester paper ECT 203 logic circuit design where you will have a basic understanding of very log and FPGS so uh, this is uh, a richly paid thing uh, uh, even though we in India we do not have a a VLSI foundry we still have a VLSI design industry which is a very promising one uh, and uh, recently the government of India is trying to invest a lot of money in uh, VLSI foundries etc so there are a lot of opportunities in the VLSI field uh, but this hardware description languages uh, etc uh, form a very small fraction of the VLSI industry but a knowledge of such systems like FPGAs the Verilog etc will give an entry uh, into the VLSI uh, sector so th this uh, part this path uh, every electronics engineer in student uh, should uh, uh, pay attention to because you, you have a lot to gain uh, this side in this path you have a lot to gain and here uh, we, we have languages for scientific computing that is here uh, if you go to this uh, python language etc if you learn uh, you will have a lot of opportunities in uh, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data analysis, etc. So, this, uh, the, 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 these concepts like um, machine learning, AI, etc., are seeping into every area of, of uh, human life. Uh, every engineering so you, you have to have a good understanding here also there are a lot of opportunities in uh, AI machine learning Python programming data analysis etc so industrial students can follow this path also this is also a richly uh, paying uh, area uh, then there are things like MATLAB IDL etc but uh, the, these are commercial tools on which you may not easily get an industry job etc because people are uh, m most industries uh, these days use uh, python programming uh, uh, for their work so learning python will be uh, very useful for your uh, future uh, you, you in your upcoming semester I think in the third semester you have a scientific computing lab which if you do in python that will be very beneficial to you and here this MATLAB ideal they are uh, commercial languages uh, but uh, I don't recommend you that at the moment that is why I don't put this in blue color and here there's another uh, commercial tool here there's a commercial tool here called lab view uh, if you uh, use lab view uh, you will get a lot of uh, opportunities in the industry especially in the instrumentation uh, control industries uh, where uh, uh, th this uh, this uh, what is called a virtual instrumentation tool that is used by many industries so a good knowledge of lab view will land you in good jobs in uh, control and instrumentation areas so uh, industrial control and automation uh, you, you get a lot of opportunities in industrial control and automation and languages for the web those who are into web programming etc you can uh, use uh, you can learn python php ruby java then uh, what is called the uh, python django etc so you can make many web applications game development etc but uh, uh, I, I don't put it in blue because uh, this uh, path is not exactly meant for an electronics engineer uh, so uh, so that's why I put it in black color and and th this part the last uh, the last part you have to understand very carefully you have to pay great attention to that uh, that is for languages for documentation so documentation is very important whatever project you take up or whatever work you do uh, ultimately you will uh, you will be communicating with the uh, fellow members or with your peers or with other companies or your clients with the help of reports or charts or uh, plots or graphs or uh, or uh, sometimes presentations uh, etc so you you will be able to document your work properly so there are uh, languages for documentation specific languages for documentation uh, such as latex leaks etc so i strongly recommend you to uh, understand latex uh, very well so uh, again if you go to the research uh, uh, domain you will have to make a lot of publications uh, like uh, technical papers etc for that publishing you are, you are if you know later uh, uh, much of your job is uh, made easy with the later so the, these are the sphere of four possibilities but if you in this path you may not get an industry job etc but everyone will be needing every engineer will be needing uh, some documentation tool so if you use later that will be very easy for you so the first part that is with general computing languages and the hardware description language this is a very promising sector very log uh, FPGA, ASIC etc 
then here in the uh, this also another promising one languages for scientific computing python mla etc okay so these are the sphere of opportunities uh, uh, for an electronics engineer out of computing tools programming languages etc what do you get now we come to an overview of uh, computing uh, uh, when we say about computers and peripherals uh, in computing numbers are everything in life numbers are everything and digital computers talk in binary numbers okay they 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 talk in terms of binary zeros and binary ones uh, so uh, digital computers are actually dumb machines that can move uh, bits uh, uh, within registers very fast enabling fast arithmetical operations i said dumb because it cannot think of its own it cannot uh, recognize anything like uh, if you say uh, even a 3 year old uh, uh, child can uh, recognize uh, uh, or can tell an apple from an orange or it can recognize a dog or it can uh, tell a, a cat apart a, a, apart from a dog but a computer cannot if you scan an image of a dog it cannot recognize a dog all it can do is to move data between registers that it can do very fast they manifest as arithmetic fast arithmetical computation so uh, th they can be th those fast arithmetical computation computations can be uh, good to put use so the so they though they are dumb or they cannot uh, recognize things they can be configured for countless tasks a computer has a microprocessor just like we have our brain uh, the comparison is unfair because the human brain is a, a kind of a huge uh, analog computer that is evolved over uh, uh, many many years of evolution uh, but uh, a computer also has a brain something like a micro uh, something called a microprocessor that does uh, 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 central processing uh, functions so then it has uh, peripherals like camera like we have eyes uh, then we have displays uh, uh, then keyboard uh, data entry uh, uh, mouse is there printers are there so it is with these peripherals uh, human can interact with the computers now uh, they, every computer needs to store data in binary form now the question is why the binary arithmetic because numbers are stored in the computer as electrical signal these binary numbers are stored in the computer as electrical signals uh, and these electrical signals are identified different voltage levels identification of which is uh, challenging so two voltage levels are traditionally used like uh, that so that led to the binary system like uh, uh, th these are uh, stored by solid state switches which are either on or off like if it is an on it is a one if it is an off it is a zero so that way you can configure or the other way uh, so th that's why we use uh, two voltage levels only because uh, the, the bits are the binary digits are stored in switches and those switches can be either on or off these are solid fast solid state switches now uh, this is a very primitive discussion on the memory etc uh, like a primary and secondary memory suppose i want to add two numbers uh, b and c and store the result as a then this addition this new this arithmetical operation is performed by the microprocessor uh, what are the operands like b and c uh, are my operands they are kept in the uh, uh, locations like b and c not a and b it is b and c now <coughs> the faster the memory operation the faster the computation so during this operation this b and c are kept in uh, solid state primary memory uh, and the uh, uh, result is also stored in a location otherwise the data is kept in a slow secondary memory such as a hard disk or something so you have a primary memory that is very fast a solid state memory and a uh, and a slow much bigger uh, or uh, greater storage that is called a hard disk and you have to understand uh, that everything we do on a computer is a communication process other than uh, switching on and off uh, much of the thing you do on the computer is a communication process whether it is uh, uh, moving a file or copying a file or <coughs> say sipping a file uh, essentially it's a communication process so a communication system 
uh, essentially contains a transmitter receiver and a communication channel here the microprocessor acts as a transmitter and receiver at the same time and the hard disk or uh, your memory acts as a storage channel so hard disk is actually a storage channel and this channel has the lowest bit error rate possible uh, 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 so this is what it is this property that makes all computation possible this magnetic hard disk uh, is a storage channel is a communication channel and the sp uh, uh, and the uh, uh, significance is that it has it is a channel with the lowest bit error rate typically the bit error rate of the hard disk is about 10 raised to minus 17 that is uh, if i store 10 raised to 17 bits and if i take out only at least uh, only one bit is in error so if i store 10 raised to 17 bits only one can go into error so that that, that is a error probability of hard disk it is very very uh, very very reliable uh, channel Now these computers cannot do any rational thinking, but they are very f uh, smart and fast in uh, binary and logical operations. So what they require is uh, like a dumb servant, they require proper instructions. So the smarter the instructions, the smarter the computer works. So instructing a computer to perform some task is called programming. Okay. So it can be done with binary codes, a good old method, like uh, initially during the evolution of computers there was a time when people uh, used punch cards to key in these ones and zeros. But uh, then later uh, people started to do in assembly language, then high level languages came to picture. Nowadays people work with the mostly with the high level languages. Now this instruction of this computer that is called programming and why do we do this programming? That, that, that you have to understand that is why do we do programming that is programming is uh, primarily done for automating uh, repetitive and boring tasks suppose you have a lot of boring and repetitive tasks uh, programming is done to automate them okay this this idea you have to have in your mind uh, programming is done to automate the boring and repetitive tasks Now how the dumb servant or the computer understands specific programs are called uh, called compilers or interpreters they convert the high level language to machine code that the computer can understand in terms of voltage levels <coughs> so the humans can understand the english text so uh, uh, somewhat similar to the english text we have a programming language like c or python and in that we generate the programming uh, uh, or the generate the computer program or the instruction of the uh, that is to be given to the computer and in between between uh, the human and the computer there is a program called a compiler or interpreter what this compiler or interpreter does is it takes this high level language and converts into machine code that the computer can understand now if we are using assembly level coding there's a program called assembler but here we worry um, about compilers and interpreters and we have to know what a compiler uh, is and what an interpreter is there are two um, mainly two types of high level languages one are interpreter languages and compiled languages <coughs> if you say uh, python is an interpreter language interpreter language means uh, you t key in a, an instruction or key in a code or line of code uh, and then the interpreter interprets it and uh, uh, returns the result that is a line by line execution uh, when you say uh, talk about compiled languages what we do is we complete a uh, we completely write a program then we compile it make it error free then the compiler uh, uh, converts it into a kind of an executable file and then you run the executable file to get the program out okay so c languages uh, such as c latex uh, uh, etc they are compiled languages c plus plus they are all compiled languages like you have to write the full source code without any error then you have to get it compiled by the compiler then the compiler uh, creates and then you have to make an executable file then you have to run the executable file to get your actual uh, work done now interpreter language is uh, something straightforward like python programming uh, python is an interpreter language what you what it does is a line by line execution you key in a line of code uh, uh, give it to the interpreter the interpreter interprets and returns the result this is very useful such a languages interpreter languages are very useful in scientific computing etc where uh, we want uh, uh, to get some results very fast uh, okay uh, but in uh, software development etc uh, the compiled languages are much better 
interpreter interprets line by line language compiled language is creates an object file which is converted to an uh, uh, executable file then the executable is run to get the output python r etc are interpreter languages c c++ java etc are compiled languages later case a compiled language Now, why learn C? As electronics engineers, you have to you work with a lot of hardware. So, communicating with the hardware, you have to ha have a, a very uh, lowest level, high level uh, language that is C. And C is a very fast language. So, oh, oh, when you when you work in real time, when you work with the hardware in real time, uh, get a fast operation is very important. So, that is why you have to learn uh, C. And C, you, you have to learn because you have to write a lot of drivers. You have to develop a lot of device drivers and for that uh, you, you you will need C programming languages then uh, used in the development of embedded system software tools and uh, operating system so for most of the real-time computing you have to learn C and later on you you will when you come across uh, signal processing and real-time communication systems you will need uh, C programming uh, because in the uh, signal processing uh, domain, uh, you work with uh, many uh, uh, signal processing hardware. They are somewhat different from your microprocessor. There are certain uh, uh, chips uh, designed for the DSP operation. They are called the digital signal processor, uh, 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 digital signal process. So, uh, like uh, the Texas instrument chips, uh, analog devices, uh, hardware, etc. So there, uh, uh, you, you, they, they are meant for signal processing operation. Those are hardware or that those uh, VLSI chips are used for uh, uh, signal processing operation. There also, you will need C programming to uh, uh, work with this uh, signal processing hardware. So, uh, as an electronics engineer, you have to learn C for all these uh, purposes. Now, when I come to the end of this session, uh, the summary of understanding. So, in this video, you appreciated an overview of computing. Then you understood the course outcomes and the total national level program outcomes. Then you understood the sphere of opportunities in computing for electronic students. Uh, uh, then you appreciated the different programming languages and understood the purpose of learning C. And that is the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you all.